Hikaru Nakamura has had a very busy autumn schedule. First of all, he played in the Sinkfield Cup in St. Louis. Then he went all the way over to Azerbaijan for the World Cup knockout tournament. Did pretty well there. Then he went all the way back to the States and played in the Millionaire Open in Las Vegas, which he won. And then, having pocketed 100k, he immediately went back to Europe and played in the, the European Club Cup in Macedonia, where he was representing a team from Italy. Well, maybe he just bit off a bit more than he can chew. This game is from that tournament, the European Club Cup, and from round two. Now he's playing, Hikaru Nakamura has the black pieces, and he's playing against the Swiss number one, Yannick Peltier, who is rated a long way below Nakamura, but he is a pretty decent player, very experienced player, and certainly not to be underestimated. Well, it's a King's Indian, Nakamura in his element, and it's the main line. So you get this locked pawn structure in the middle of the board. And black usually tries to attack on the king side and white on the queen side. B4 from Peltier. I like this move very much. It's the, the so-called bayonet variation. And it's a very direct way of playing for white. Basically, you're, you're just trying to open up the queen side as quickly as possible, open up the c file, weaken d6, and try and get play going on the queen side before black has a chance to attack on the queen side. Now, there are two main moves here. You can either play knight h5 or a5 as Nakamura played. So a5, the idea, is, of course, is to undermine um, white's hold over the c5 square. Bishop a3 from Peltier. And now, you know, one way of playing this is to exchange on b4. So in that way, you're covering c5. But, you know, white somehow has engaged uh, black uh, on the queen side and, and is opening lines very quickly. Nakamura played b6 here. That's a, that's a subtle move. Basically keeping his options open. So Nakamura, ex uh, excuse me, Peltier exchanges. And, well, if Rook takes a5, then we've transposed back into normal lines with a4 and a5, etc. But here's Nakamura's idea. Very clever. Instead of recapturing straight away, he plays knight h5. So this leaves his options open. So if white plays bishop b4 now then you can take on a5 so white loses a bit of time and you know this knight is pretty annoying on on f4 ready to take off that bishop on e2 um so instead of playing bishop b4 peltier played knight d2 so hitting the knight and the knight came to f4 and here well bishop b4 is is a kind of normal move, and this will transpose back into lines that we've just looked at. But here, Yannick Peltier uncorked a novelty that he prepared 10 years ago, but has, hadn't had the chance to play. He sacrificed a piece with A takes B6. So, of course, Nakamura took the bishop on A3, now here's the idea, knight b5, hitting the rook, the rook has to retreat. Rook a8 is probably a better move, but Nakamura played rook a5. And you can see that for the piece, well, what's the score? White has three pawns, far advanced pawn on c7, and perhaps the possibility to advance the, the other queenside pawns as well. And crucially, and, I, and this is what I like about this variation, all the play is centred on the queen side. Black hasn't had a chance to get play going on the king side. Really, if black messes around here, then you know white's initiative with knight b3 and a5 and so on is going to roll black away, or knight b3 and maybe c5. 
So black has to react pretty quickly here. You could take off the knight on b5, but you can see those pawns look pretty dangerous. Nakamura tried bishop a6, but actually already he's gone wrong. And now here's a very important moment. If the rook is taken, the bishop comes back and the pawn is going to drop. And black has uh, pretty good defensive chances there. But c takes uh, b5 is, is the correct recapture. Excellent move. So now there are two connected pass pawns. If the rook retreats, well, I mean, that would be absolutely hopeless. Uh, well, either a5 or b6, I think, would be very, very good for white. So queen takes c7. This is Nakamura's hope. So he's given back some of the material. So he has two knights against rook and two pawns, but he's hoping to blockade these pawns. If he can blockade these pawns, maybe with a knight, or on a really good day by bringing this bishop round, to the dark squares, then he'll be doing okay. But let's see how Peltier dealt with this. First of all, g3, getting rid of, rid of that knight. Uh, of that knight. Um, it's complicated, but probably this is good for white if the knight checks, because suddenly that knight is really short of squares. But it's it's messy. Nakamura simply took off that bishop. But I think Peltier uh, would have been very happy at this moment because having got rid of that knight, uh, the, the queen is on a good square. He's connected his rooks. He's also given his king an escape square. So now he can really start to try to get those pawns motoring. Bishop h6. So what Nakamura wants to do is try to bring that bishop into the game somehow and get a blockade on the dark squares. But, not so simple. Rook b1, supporting the pawn, threatening to play b6, so there's no time to get in bishop d2. Rook b8. Okay, a crucial moment, because if those pawns are blockaded, then black will have a chance here. You know, if that knight can come around here, and, and maybe later even swing to c5, uh, that will not be simple for white. Uh, so what did Peltier do? Well, he recognised that he had to keep the initiative and he simply gave this pawn up. It's, it's a really excellent move, a, a brave decision. But, well, when you see what happens in the game, you'll realise absolutely correct to give up that pawn. So a5. So uh, apart from getting this a pawn rolling, Actually, one of the, the, the points of giving up this pawn is to exchange rooks. And minor pieces simply don't work as effectively when they're on their own. They often need a support of a rook. Well, if queen a7, then the pawn rolls on. Uh, instead of queen c5. So this is a little bit tricky. If a6, then knight c8 hoping to blockade here is not so simple. But rook a4 is a really good move, really good move. So that prevents the knight coming over because of rook c4 and a nasty pin. So king g7. Okay, now a6 and now knight c8 because in this case, well, we'll see in a moment, there's no check. And here is a tricky moment, very tricky moment. It looks as though queen c4 should be an excellent move here. Forcing the exchange of queens will be a simple win, but nice trick from Nakamura. He'd obviously planned this a few moves ago. Bishop e3 gives black a chance to save the game because if that's taken, then that's actually going to be a draw by perpetual check. And, well, this end game still very promising for white but not clearly winning because black does have a blockade but instead of queen c4 rook c4 is an excellent move queen b5 that's why the king went to g7 it's no longer check so nakamura hanging on with tricks here so obviously 
the rook is pinned. But, nice move, queen a2, supporting the pawn, keeping everything protected and preventing any check on b1. Knight b6, well, let's see what happens. What about rook, uh, knight a7? Well then, white can break this blockade. Rook c7 is a very good move. So first of all, attacking the knight. Queen defends. How do you break the blockade? Well, for the moment, black is holding firm here, but that rook is beautifully placed. Queen e2 just stretches black. And now queen f3. There's no defense to this. Uh, black cannot defend both flanks and wins. So Nakamura tried knight b6. Rook c6, pressure here and here. So actually th there's a th simple threat to take on b6, take the knight and, and play a7, so knight a4. And now nice technique, a7, not messing around here. And now just king g2, I mean there are other ways to win this, but this is very clean, a very clean finish. So just avoiding any nasty checks. And after queen takes pawn, rook c4 simply wins the knight because of the pin. And, well, these last moves were superfluous. You can see that white is a clear exchange up and no technical difficulties at all. Uh, black always has to avoid an exchange of queens, but after this it has gone completely. So, well, two pawns in exchange is just way too much. Of course, if f6... Then the queen comes to b8, and white is still the exchange up. Really nice uh, technical victory from Yannick Peltier, uh, and, well, an incredible story to produce this novelty after 10 years. But Nakamura didn't defend that well. He did have a chance right at the start of um, this peace sacrifice to defend better. Um, but, well, he was outplayed on this day. As he said afterwards, when you play too much chess in a short period, bad things tend to happen. In the European Club Cup, uh, Hikaru played, I think he played six games and he only made 50%. Um, he's a very optimistic person by nature, but I think even he realized afterwards that that was just taking things a bit too far to fit in so much chess. Thanks for watching and I'll be posting more videos very soon.